Good afternoon, everyone. Thank y'all. I appreciate the energy. So um, I'm going to go through my presentation today, um, which I have prepared. But I think that the real value in here um, and in this conversation is going to probably come from the questions that you guys have about the market um, in Africa. And I think that that's very important to highlight. Like, you know, with the presentation that I've prepared, it kind of has a particular scope. But I think some of the value and the questions that you have, will be able, I'll be able to answer some of the things that are probably outside of what's been prepared in the presentation, which I think will offer value for you guys here um, as a live audience and also those who get to watch the recording. So without further ado, I will start my presentation. Hey, Tony. Hey, Amy. How are y'all? John, I see you. Lloyd, Kel Kelby, and all of the, you beautiful people. So. Um, my presentation is called Africa X, the Emergence of Industry. Let's talk. First, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Kevin Y. Brown. I am the Chief Content Officer and Head of Strategy at AfriPods. Um, AfriPods is an amazing platform. I'll tell you more about it in just one second. For myself, I am one of the technical uh, visionary um, visionaries of AfriPods and the platform, as well as I've been working in the podcast industry for over seven years, and I am a podcast host. Um, so I have a show called the Create Your Life series where we have recorded over 187 episodes, which is also syndicated on SiriusXM, and I also am in podcast production um, where I run a company called Podcast Laundry, and we have produced almost 1,000 podcast episodes to date over the last few years. So moving on, the reason why I wanted to tell you about my background in podcasting is because I understand the business from the talent side, the business side, and also from the technical side, which helps us to be able to have a fully uh, comprehensive experience and conversation about what's taking place in Africa. About Afropods, we are a Pan-African hosting and distribution platform based out of Nairobi, Kenya. We are focused on the African creator throughout the continent and throughout the diaspora. And our goal is to build the largest library of African stories on the planet. Um, with that being said, we actually have the opportunity to have a library that spans over 30 countries in Africa. And you can also listen in up to 52 different languages on the Afropods platform and most of those languages primarily being African dialect. So moving forward, um, I think it's very important for me to cover how I ended up getting into podcasting because you're probably wondering how does an American end up on the ground working in podcasting in Africa, like really on the ground, helping to build the industry. So let me talk to you about that. I, um, education wise, I have a background in fashion design. <laughs> so bear with me. <laughs> So my background, my educational background is in fashion design. Um, and from there, I graduated college, did a little bit of hosting for MTV, and then I worked in the fashion industry and decided to become a professional speaker, where I was traveling around the world, speaking in Australia, hey, Jono, um, as well as Japan, uh, the United States, Dominican Republic, et cetera, et cetera, and I wrote a book. Um, so storytelling is something natural um, that comes to me. But after being in Australia in 2015, it dawned on me that I needed a way in order to uh, continue to have contact with my audience. And so with that being said, uh, my god brother had told me to get into podcasting in 2006 and I didn't listen. So I went on a radio show in, in New York on WACR, The Voice of Harlem, and on my friend Ash Cash's show, and I did a pretty good job there. And so I got it in my mind that I was going to send a proposal and ask, um, shout out to Angela Hardin, who was the station program manager for an opportunity to be a radio host. And so she granted me the opportunity. And from then I turned my radio presentation into a podcast. So that's how I got into podcasting was by being a radio host. And then from there, um, my goal was to get the show syndicated on Sirius XM and turn it into this really, really, really big thing. And so we worked and worked and worked as a team, and within two years, we met our goal, and we got the show syndicated on SiriusXM. Around that time, I would say it was about 2018, and that's when other people started to really get into podcasting, and so they wanted help with how to start and launch their podcast. So I founded a company called Podcast Laundry, where we were helping people to launch their podcast and also doing their post-production. And so in that, we've been able to take ideas, I mean, take shows from idea to top three in their niche in the world, and produce many, many shows. And so with Podcast Laundry, what that allowed me to do was is actually take my talents and take, um, take my team and create a sustainable income where you could work remotely. 
So why does re working remotely mean anything or matter in this particular situation? Well, let me tell you about getting to Africa. So what happened was, is that because I had this ability to work remotely, I was like, all right, let me go to, um, let me go to Africa for six months. I just want to go and travel. And so I picked out six different countries. I picked out Ghana, Senegal, um, Kenya, Rwanda, Ethiopia, and South Africa. I said, I want to go to these places. And so one of my friends said, hey, there's this, um, there is this conference happening in Rwanda called the Africa Tech Summit. You should submit to be a speaker there. Well, at this point, I put in you know, over my 10,000 hours of podcasting. And so I said, all right, well, let me go ahead and submit in order to be a speaker at this conference. So they accepted me. I found out that, you know what I mean, they didn't have anything else going on in regards to podcasting. So when I got on the ground, I started off in Senegal. I started to ask people and talk to people about podcasting. And every country that I went to, I was talking and I was doing customer discovery and development and really trying to understand what the podcast landscape looked like across all of these different countries. And by the time I made it to Kenya, which was the country that I, my third country, before I went to Rwanda for my presentation, I'd essentially figured out that um, there, I couldn't find much information about podcasting in Africa or couldn't find the key players. So it really began to spark my interest. And so I went to uh, Africa Tech Summit in Rwanda. It was an amazing experience. Got a really, really great um, reaction to my presentation. And from there, uh, there were some job inquiries that were sent to me. So Afripods actually um, wanted to chat with me about being employed with them then in 2019. Um, so we had some conversations and some discussions. Um, and then I went on to Ethiopia and I continued to do the same thing, which was converse and do customer development and discovery and try to figure out what does the landscape look like. And so after Ethiopia, I went to South Africa where I studied podcasting in the industry and the trends and things like that over the course of three months. And so until they kicked me out of the country <laughs> for, for my visa, you only get 90 days. They didn't really kick me out, but you know, I did have to go after the 90 days was up. And so there in South Africa, I found the most data and I also found you know, trends on behavior and started to reach out to all of the people who were on the ground and who had been doing these things. And so from there, I was like inspired. And so I left South Africa on fire. I was like, I'm coming back to the United States and I'm gonna move back to South Africa and I'm going to work on this business plan, et cetera, et cetera. Well, I got back to the States, uh, took it to the startup program that I was in, startup leadership program, talked to some of the advisors and things like that from there. And we, you know, we had some conversations and things like that. We talked about the market being early, et cetera, et cetera. And I took about 16 months and then I relocated back to Africa. Um, and so I moved back to Nairobi um, because I felt that South Africa was a bit established, but there was more opportunity in Nairobi. And that's where I ended up running into uh, Molly Jensen, who's my colleague and CEO, and had some more conversations with the Afropods team and then joined the Afropods team. So that's essentially how you get a African-American working on the ground, or at least this African-American working on the ground in podcasting in Africa. And so now what I'd like to do is kind of switch over to talk to you guys more about the emerging market, but I thought that my story of getting there was important because I actually didn't move to Africa with a job. I moved still doing podcast laundry and then the job found me, but I really understood the market from all of that research. Um, so when we talk about the emerging market, I think what's really important is to understand some of the trends and the behaviors, because the interesting thing about Africa and the way that things are happening is that they don't necessarily, in many ways they reflect, but in other ways they do not. Um, so yeah, please take pictures, gentlemen. Um, so when we talk about like the po top uh, podcasts, like themes or genres, then we're talking about culture, media, and arts, you know what I mean, which is like the top one. But one of the big things for podcasters and creators in Africa, what they're currently using is YouTube. And so what we've been doing is like making a conscious effort to get those uh, big YouTubers and social media influencers to come over into the podcasting game so that they can expand their reach and also expand their uh, income. And so next we have health and wellness, uh, current affairs and news, science and technology, and also business. So those are the top themes. Now, something else that's really interesting is what type of content is actually being consumed by the listeners here. And I want to point out also, I want to shout out Africa Podfest because they're the ones who made this data and research available. Um, so Melissa and Josephine, as well as Barraza Media Labs and some of the other partners. Um, and so one of the other things about this is, is that a lot of the countries and those who were surveyed in here were Kenya, Nigeria, and South Africa, 
right? And one of the things that you'll find about Africa as we are working to build this industry is we're really working together to try to gather the data. And data can have its, uh, its challenges. And so what you'll find, like as you're looking at Kenya, as you're looking at Nigeria and South Africa, there's a big listening rate for international shows and international content. But you also see that you see a large rate of homogenous content, content which is actually from home. And then you see some from other African countries. Well, the truth is, is that people are loyal to their soil. So they listen to their own stuff, but you know, podcasting being that most podcasts in the world are primarily in English, et cetera, et cetera, then that is something that uh, plays a part in, you know what I mean, us seeing these big international uh, rates and ways. Another thing that I like to point out that you can't see on this, but is actually really, really on the rise on the continent is a rise in vernacular podcasts. And vernacular meaning like local languages which is really important to understand because now if you have to listen to English, but English is your second or third language, then you have to like comprehend it, you know what I mean, essentially translate it, figure out what it's saying, and then listen, right? But if you listen it into your native tub, which you're usually, um, which you're usually talking in and listening in, then it makes the listener experience easier. And so us at Afropods, we're really, really encouraging creators to do content in their vernacular um, because as the world becomes more westernized, it's very important for people to keep, and especially in Africa, for people to um, preserve their history, culture, uh, traditions, and also language, so that future generations can also have an authentic African experience. So I think that podcasting in that way is a low cost way in order for us to achieve this goal. That's something that I'm very passionate about when it comes to podcasting in the industry in Africa. Next, market accessibility. Um, so what you'll see here is you have Kenya, Nigeria, and South Africa. If you look at Kenya and, Niger Kenya and South Africa, you'll see that most people are listening and using Wi-Fi as the tool in which to get their podcast. Um, their podcasts. But a lot in Nigeria, it's a little bit different. And that's the thing about the different countries as well, is that people are, have different behaviors because all of these countries have different things going on. But the cost of data in sub-Saharan Africa is about $6.44 per gigabyte, which is really, really expensive in comparison to a lot of other places in the world. So you have different things that contribute to the factors and the behaviors. And so what I think is important is why we, you know what I mean, have interest in Africa and things like that. You have to really go in and, and respect the way that people do things and really learn. Right? Like we can't go in and even for myself, you know what I mean, with a colonial mindset of this is how things should be done, this is how we should view them, et cetera. We have to literally be students of how things operate and ask a lot of questions in order to understand the behaviors. Um, and so when you look at this, like Africa has a lot of um, mobile penetration. So when we look at, oh, what are the devices that are most being used? Of course, it's mobile phones followed by laptops, but you have a really, really big drop off from 87.4% to 10%, right, is the difference between mobile and laptop. And then you go down to tablet and, I, and others, right, but on the tablet is 1.4%, that number would be a lot higher here in the States or here in the Western world. And so really understanding that people are like mobile first is super, super, super important, as well as the population as well. Um, one of the things about Africa in a way that you'll, and if you want to be successful in the African podcasting market, is you have to understand the age and the groups of people. Prime example, 40% um, of Africa is 15 years, 15 years or younger, right? So you have a really, really big youth population. So if you want to be a successful company in Africa, you really have to involve the youth for future generations. As of 2021, 270, 207 million people were ages between zero and four. 650 people, 650 million people were aged 17 and below, and 48 million aged 65 and above. So when you really see this, you can really see that this is a young continent. And there's some other statistics out there about 2030 and 2050 and how it will continue to have this young generation. And so this young generation has aspirations in order to make a better life for themselves and things like that, which means that they're going to be looking for content in order to learn how to do these things that might not necessarily be 
um, available at the moment, but they might have to create or they might have to learn from others in order to create, which is where people like us come in and are able to um, assist, but also teach so that I could be homegrown and done in vernacular, et cetera, et cetera, by experts who understand the landscape there on the ground. And so now talking about behavioral trends. So one of the things that I find and think that's really interesting is the time of day in which people are listening to pods, right? So you have the biggest population is between 6 and 10 a.m. and then also between 8 and 12 a.m., which is different from radio because radio is usually streamlining with the commute time, right? So now you have people who are essentially working and doing this at work, before work, after work, and into, you know what I'm saying, their night, night hours. And the reason why I'm pointing that out is because the CPM that we've been having conversations about and things like that has actually been low. But I think with data like this, when you're seeing the employment or sources of income, and you're seeing that 44% of people have full-time jobs, et cetera, this is a way for us to add value for people to be able to actually um, raise the CPM or have conversations around a higher CPM so that then we can encourage more creators to create so that then we can grow the industry. Because the biggest thing about podcasting right now is that it is still budding and we need more creators, we need more advertisers, we need more, um, more industry players and media houses jumping over to the medium even if it's just to syndicate content. And so these are some of the things and some of the trends that are helping us to have these conversations and indulge people in taking a part in podcasting in Africa. And so I wanna to talk to you a bit about the early adopters. So the Gold Coast Report, these gentlemen are out of Ghana in Accra, they host a um, conference called Mosaic, which takes place um, in the fall. I was just there on November. Great, great um, one day event that they're looking to expand. But what they've been able to do is they've gotten, um, they've produced eight shows and continue to do so uh, from 2020 to 2022, so for three years. But their numbers have grown extensively and they were even won a Spotify award, I believe, um, for one of their pods where they got a grant and things like that. And so if you can see their numbers, you know, they're 208,000, you know, in 2020, then they went to 445 and these are their annual numbers up until almost, uh, 559,000. And so, but where the real story is being told is in the top locations of the listeners year over year. And so when you're looking at it, you're seeing Ghana, you're seeing the US and you're seeing the UK. And now when we switch over to the mics are open, so these are individual podcasters that we have relationships with. These guys have been at it for a while as well. However, they have 2.34 million streams across audio platforms, 358 episodes, but look at their growth year over year. 2020, they were getting 13,000 monthly downloads during the pandemic. Post-pandemic, now they're up to 130,000 downloads per month. So that's telling you consistency, et cetera, et cetera. However, again, the top locations of listeners year over year is Kenya, US, Mauritius, and then UK. So where's the story at here? The story is in the locations, because what you're seeing is people love their home content, but they also are other people who are in the US who may be you know, Ghanaian or Kenyan respectively, who are listening to content from home, but there's also probably people who are living in America or, or in the UK who just wanna hear African content told by Africans. And so what this is telling us also is that in order for podcasting to grow as an industry overall, we're gonna need help from the diaspora and there's gonna to need to be a collaborative effort in order to grow this industry. And so that is something that I really, really, really wanna drive home is that you know, no industry is an island the same way that we come to podcast movement and everybody's working together and we're having conversations and it's collaborative um, in order to figure out how to make this something sustainable, the same thing has to take place over here. And so we welcome you guys and we want to have the conversations in order to really build the space and work with you know, some of these early adopters to make them, um, you know what I mean, essentially legends or grandfathered into the industry, but be able to help others. And I think one of the other things that you can really appreciate about uh, people like GCR, the mics are open and G Money and, um, and Calvin is the fact that these guys care more so about the industry and the way that other podcasters are being treated. And they actually do a really good job of not taking on opportunities that they feel won't better the industry later on. And so a lot of these creators are very, very conscious about that. 
And that's something that, you know, we have to be mindful of as, you know, foreigners working in this market is you really have to be a student and understand the way that people do things throughout the different countries because the customs and the cultural way of doing things are completely different. So it's all, you're always a student, always asking questions, always working to understand versus to tell and instruct. And so the biggest thing that I think that, you know, following on that, you know, being a part and helping and um, understanding is building and building with community in mind. And so with that, how do we do it at AfriPods? Number one, strategic partnerships. Strategic partnerships with media houses, also podcasters, et cetera, et cetera, is a way in which we work to be a part of the community. Like the biggest thing is we have to respect, like, you know, I feel like I know a lot about podcasting. My colleagues know a lot about podcasting, but guess what? There were people there doing this stuff before us. And even as I did my, you know, initial research and things like that, you know, when I was traveling through Africa during that six months uh, during, in 20, 2018, 2019, there were a lot of people that I didn't know and a lot that I didn't know about. So, I, you know, while some people might say, oh, you're a pioneer, et cetera, et cetera, in African podcasting, I would also say that I'm not the only one. Right. Or I would say that I would defer to those who were there who are from there, you know what I mean, who are doing the work and have been doing the work. And so that's really, really important. You know, when you talk about strategic partnerships, you talk about existing in a space that is not native to your own is really, you know, giving the respect and uh, the credit to those who have, who have been doing the work at the same time and before you. Um, when we talk about education, I think one of the things that differs what's happening in Africa um, versus what's happening here is the fact that we're doing a lot of the educating and presenting, you know what I mean, to a lot of different like media houses, um, creators, et cetera, et cetera, about what podcasting is and how podcasting can benefit you. And so a lot of that education and things like that is going to universities, having strategic partnership with universities, you know what I mean, and with uh, different social groups and having like different meetups and stuff like that in order to help and in order to engage because the engagement is so important. And what we found is that when you're on the ground and you're really in the places where the creators are, where people are, is that they show the love back. You know what I mean? There's a loyalty there. And there's also another aspect of the loyalty in the fact that, you know, like, as knowledgeable as you may be or as you may feel, you still need to bring somebody who is from home into the mix and have them having the conversations and being a part as a student. So a lot of times it's you getting out the spotlight or what have you and actually supporting your team members in order for them, in order for the greater good of the industry. So I think that that's really important, especially as we'll see like more companies trying to come into Africa and things like that. Like sometimes people miss the mark because they're not um, respecting the way that things are done there, and they're not coming with the homogenous um, approach. You know what I mean? And authenticity matters a lot. Um, and I'll talk more about relationships and things like that as we uh, move forward. But the other aspect is community um, activations, right? Like being on the ground, and like we did Africa Pod Podcast Day in February. Right, and so what this is, it's like International Podcast Day, but it's a day for, to celebrate African podcasters and their contributions to the space. And you know, while we educate, we also you know, highlight some of the things that you know, are going on in the industry. And you know, we bring in people from the West, right? I think even for International Podcast Day, we had Amber from iHeart. We have some other players. Hey, Amber, how you doing? Uh, we have some other players, you know what I mean, from the, from the West, come in and help uh, celebrate and talk. Even uh, Dan Franks from Podcast Movement was on a panel that we had um, just in, uh, for, in February, right, for this. And so what it is is, again, we have to collaborate in order to build this industry, even though it seems like it's a world away or it is a world away. Um, you know, it's important for us to collaborate and to, you know, we welcome others into the space and to help, but again, you know what I mean, also giving respect to those who are from there and who are doing their thing. Um, so different community activations, like we do virtual meetups called Afropods Meet, so we do those like almost monthly. And so what that is is an opportunity for different podcasters to come in, um, you know, talk about their experience in podcasting, what they would like to do. Uh, we collaborate with different podcasting communities in different uh, countries in Africa. And then we also allow them to give us feedback about the platform because one of the biggest things for us is we want to make sure that we're building a platform that is for African creators with what African creators want. And how does that look? That looks like sometimes we may get feedback. Like one of the things that an African creator 
um, Adela Nyong'o that she wanted to, that she felt like she wanted to see on Afropods or she wanted from one of her creator, I mean, from one of her platforms, um, was the opportunity to see when people stopped listening to her pod. And so we went in and we actually, you know, I talked to the engineering team and we had some conversations and we worked on that, you know what I mean, to build that out because it was something that the creators on the ground wanted. Now that doesn't mean that creators elsewhere don't want it, but it means that what we're doing is, is we're serious about making sure that we build for African creators on the ground authentically. So, you know, it's, you know realistically, it's a forest bias type, type situation. Um, and so just really being active in the community, when we see podcasters who are up and coming, you know, like we support them, whether it be like social media support, um, you know, live event support and things like that, like we are really tapped in and on the ground. And right now we just expanded, I think, into our, our seventh market where we're really boots on the ground. Of course, we're continental wide, but we're definitely um, on boots on the ground in like the se our seventh market now. So really excited. Um, can't touch too much on that, but just know that there's some good things coming from Afropods in the near future. So I'm excited to let y'all know about that. Um, and so us as a platform, let's talk about the stats. Like for us, um, we've seen an increase in podcasts on the platform. Uh, that increase has been about 173%. Um, so, you know, we're, we're, we're tracking, you know, and then 147.5% uh, um, and website total users. So the, the word about podcasting, the understanding of podcasting is going up. I would also like to mention that a lot of our podcast listeners that do use Afropods are mobile first. And so in mobile first, what that means is, is that they're actually using mobile web in order to access and listen, right? So one of the things that's interesting about behavior is that a lot of times People, you know, they have limited storage space on their phone and they also have limited data. So they're not necessarily going to download another app. So, you know what I mean? You have to meet them where they are, understand that, and then encourage them to use where, what it is that they're already using or what already is native to them. Um, in terms of our page viewership, that's went up by 257%. And then our top markets for usership are Uganda, Kenya, United States, UK, South Africa, and South Sudan. And so, you know, it changes and it's evolving. It's ever evolving, actually. And so it's just something that we are really, really working at and we're tracking. And we're also doing um, independent research on our own, but I'm not using that here because I don't want to seem biased. But we are tracking some, def some definite like trends and behaviors that we'll be able to share with you guys at a future date. So with that being said, I think again, as more people from the West start to look towards Africa and what's happening, I think that there's a couple things that I would like to give to you that are near and dear that I have really come to understand about uh, working abroad um, in these particular markets and you know, having like literally like having to go to these different markets and have conversations and sit in on meetings and things like that. Number one, essential for success, for success is relationships. Like, you know, money is great, but People have to like you and need to know you, and that might require a couple of warm intros for you to get the conversation and really move things. Like, I cannot stress the value of relationships, like, enough. Like, you, everything will depend upon the relationship, and you have to really, really do a good job in guarding it, nurturing it, and making sure that you're watering it. Because you will literally, you won't be able to move forward if you don't have the relationships. And I'm talking about, you know, I've spent time in certain situations. I have, I've, tra I've chased down contracts for 12 months. You know what I mean? Trying to really solidify deals. And I'm like literally 12 months um, and some even longer. And you know, it's not necessarily that the person doesn't like you, that it doesn't make business sense. It is really about the fact that I don't know you. And so with that, you know, in other places in the world, you know, it's, uh, oh, the dollars make sense, we can do this. My experience is that it's a relationship. Um, I think adaptability, you know, understanding how people do things in other markets and the ways in which, um, the ways in which <laughs> the, the customs and everything works is very, very important. So you need to be able to adapt, you need to ask a lot of questions, and you need to understand understand, understand, I can't stress that enough. You have to understand and you have to be curious about how to continue to improve. It's like every day, like being a student. So like you have to adapt, things work differently. Uh, so you have to learn and grow continuously. And um, I would also say you really, 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 really want to exercise patience, right? Because what might, while your time might be valuable to you, it might not be, you know what I mean, a priority to someone else 
So you really have to exercise patience and persistence. And then I think benefits is something else that's essential for success, um, is understanding the benefits of your client. And from city to city, um, from country to country, those benefits may look differently. So it's going to require some additional research and, again, conversations with people on the ground. Like certain things will be the same in different countries, but a lot of times you need to have conversations with people who are on the ground, who are working in the industry, and understand what it is that's driving this particular media house, what's driving this particular set of creators, what's driving this particular set of creators that are a part of this pod hub or a part of this particular collective. Because understanding that is, it's everything. Like, I'm telling you, like, there are times where creators are like, I don't care, you know, if it's X company coming in offering me this amount of money. I don't feel like they're authentic or that they really care about us as African creators. They're just trying to, you know what I mean, meet a quota. And like the creators are really saying this. And it's like, so the question there is, well, what is it that you feel like would make them, make you feel like they actually care? Why do you feel like they don't? You know what I mean? So it's asking questions based upon their experiences with other people. And I'm talking about from media houses to creators, you know what I mean, about trying to figure out what it is that makes them tick, trying to, make, trying to figure out what it is that, um, that's driving them because a lot of times it's not the money and they're doing it for the greater good of the industry versus the greater good of themselves. And that matters a lot. So that is my presentation. Thank you for coming to my PM talk. <laughs> Uh, please, if you have any questions, like, let's talk. Like, I've saved like, at least 12 minutes because I thought that the questions was going to be more important than my presentation. Hey, great presentation. Thank um, you. So I work at a uh, larger music streaming platform, and I'm an audience and development analyst for like, the international shows. And one of the things I've noticed is that there is a huge divergence between uh, how comfortable advertisers feel with podcasting being a viable marketing tool, so AKA how much they're willing to spend in it. And I was just curious if you could give a quick overview of what the scale of ad spend is in Africa and if there's prospect, like what the growth prospects are. I'm sure there's huge diversions between different countries, but if you could just give an overview of, of what the monetary, of how people are able to monetize. Okay, so if, if you're talking about numbers specifically, then I would misquote in this moment. So I think that would be irresponsible of me. So I can get you some, some data. Um, I think one of the other aspects of it is, is that the data, like you said, it really switches from country to country. And certain countries actually have more data than others or have more updated data than others. So that's something that we also have to keep in mind, right? Like if you look at a lot of the reports, the industry, podcasting industry reports, a lot of them are focused on South Africa, right? And, but there's a whole other 50 something countries that you know we still need data on and we still need to understand the behaviors. But because podcasting is an emerging and budding industry, then we also need to we're actually having to go out and do the research ourselves, right? And so like when you see like some of the research, like, you know, what you just saw here, um, the sample size is not as big as if somebody went out and did, you know, a 5,000, you know, peer review or something like that. Um, in terms of ways that podcasters uh, have been able to monetize, then I would say that there's definitely been like direct um, ad reads by, by talent. Um, there's been um, some dynamic ad insertion, like you, you know, you can hear it on Spotify, you know what I mean, on, on some of our competitors. Um, and then uh, some of the creators are also using their podcast as a lead magnet in order to get other opportunities. So like when I say like this is the emergence of industry, like there's still a lot that needs to be done in order to create sustainability and in order to be able to have that consistent report where we could say, hey, you know what, things are trending like this in this particular market, et cetera, et cetera. But I'm not, am I answering your question or? Yeah, yeah, I guess I was just curious whether advertisers in general are starting to consider it a viable marketing channel, podcasting. Okay, okay so the answer is, it is start, they are starting to, but we are not there yet, which I think is just really important to be honest about. Um, and what it is, is, is that in order for this to become a sustainable industry, just kind of like how it happened in the States, right, is you need, you need the media houses on board because they have, they're already getting advertising dollars. You need the advertisers, you need the individual creators, and everybody essentially has to work together as one, right, like as one uh, superhero or, or the Avengers, right, like one super team towards one goal. 
And so it's not quite there yet, but it is happening. And so what you're seeing is individual creators going to go have conversations with ad agencies, right? And so what we're doing is we're working to get with the individual creators as a technical solution, and then also have conversations, get with them in order to have conversations with the ad houses, I mean with the ad agencies, and then also include the media houses, so that it's essentially a 360 and everybody's benefiting. So more so this is like, uh, podcasting can be seen as an added value as we usher it in as a sustainable business. So that's essentially the trend that we're seeing and how things are going at the moment. Thank you. Anyone else? Hi, I wonder if you have any observations or data about um, apps, like the apps that folks use other than Afropods, that are like different than the global average or any apps that you feel are doing a really good job there uh, versus others either uh, based in the vernacular or really tailored uh, to particular countries there. Can you, can you repeat your question? I think I lost the first For part. listening apps. Okay. So if you have 100 listeners, I know it's hard to generalize, but in mm -hmm. general, how does that differ from the global set of stats that we all see day to day? You mentioned the browser thing. Mm -hmm. That was really interesting. Any other yeah. apps that maybe are popular here and aren't popular there? Yeah, so um, something that was interesting, when I went to Africa in 2018 into 2019, what I noticed was is that Spotify wasn't in a lot of places. Um, and so what you had is people using YouTube a lot, whether it was just for audio to play music at the gym, things like that. And so now what you're seeing is, is a really big upward trend of people using Spotify, but Spotify still is only available in certain markets. Like in, it didn't exist in Kenya. You had to have a VPN in order to use it in Kenya in 2019. Now you, know, you can pay a subscription through um, M-Pesa, which is mobile payment. So another thing about Africa, which is um, especially East Africa, I'll talk about Kenya specifically, um, is that th they're mobile first when it comes to money. And when I'm saying mobile first, I'm not talking about Apple Pay or Cash App because that's essentially still linked to a bank account. I'm talking about your phone number is literally like a bank account and you can store and add money to it. And then you can pay out. So people are primarily you know, the cashless and are paying through their phone. I can literally walk out of my house in Kenya, and all I need is my phone. I, nobody's going to ask me for my ID, and then you know I can make all of the payments that I need to for my life from my phone. And so, like I was saying, you know, you can pay for certain subscriptions and things like that through um, through Impesa, which wasn't available before. So some of the companies that are coming in are actually adapting to the ways in which things are being done. But I would say that YouTube is still, you know, really big, and you are seeing a rise with uh, Spotify as well as Afropods um, as a platform that people are listening to and working to um, to to use. Um, you made a great point about how the diaspora can support creators back home by supporting some of their content, but what are some of the ways that we could support Afropods just in general? I love that. I love that question. And that's coming from Lloyd from Zimbabwe. Shout out, SA. Um, wow, how can you support Afropods? I think if you are a podcaster, migrate your podcast to Afropods, um, number one. That's a great way to start um, supporting us. I think also... Uh, being involved and being being in some of the rooms that we're having, you know what I mean? Like when you, you see that we're having an event and stuff like that, like, you know, I reach out to some of you guys in here in order to, to speak on the panel and talk about your experiences. So I think that's a great way also to be able to um, to contribute to Afropods, but also sharing and promoting and letting people know about, you know what I mean, our efforts and what it is that we're doing there on the ground is really, really important, you know what I mean? I think when we talk about the diaspora being a part of uh, Afropods becoming big and you know having these African stories, I think that the, the inclusion and the Pan-Africanism idea is really, really important. Um, and just being, you know what I mean, okay with, with sharing the content um, and helping cross-collaborating, cross-promoting with creators, you know what I mean? Like we promote uh, different um, content creators every single day on the platform consistently. Reach out to them. Hey, I saw you guys on Afropod social media. Yo, let's do, a let's do a podcast episode together. You know what I mean? Or, you know, let's collaborate. Let's do this. Or, you know, a lot of y'all have my contact information. You know what I mean? I'm happy to put you in contact with some creators who are on the ground, you know what I mean, who, um, you know, could use the collaboration or who might be able to add value for you, who can open up new markets for you and things like that. So I think that there are ways in order for you to, uh, to do that. And then also come to Africa. Africa is a continent. Come to Kenya. 
right? Like, come to, come check it out. Come see what's happening, um, you know, on the ground. You know, it is one thing to, you know, it's abstract when you're not there. It's different when you're on the ground and you're actually seeing how people are doing and, 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 and uh, checking out things. So I think also following some of the creators and seeing their journeys is really important as well. Uh, does anyone else have a question? Okay. Hey, Kevin. Thanks Tony! For much. This is great. Um, in the data that you shared earlier, um, I know you highlighted... Uh, you know, language and genre that are especially popular. I'm wondering if you've noticed any trends as far as like length um, and like release schedule and like predominantly who, uh, I mean, what, what's found the most success? Like are, are, are the episodes shorter? Are they full length hour longs? And do people expect seasonal release or just perpetual release from hosts? Tony, Tony, Tony. I'm sorry. Okay, <laughs> so th those are great questions. Um, so there was time data but it was, it was around what people wanted the episode length to be versus behavior, so I didn't put it in there, but I can get it to you. Okay. Um, I think that w we have seen seasonal and continual work, but as we all know in this room, um, what is it, continual works best because it's the frequency, right? Um, but like the mics are open, that episode that I share, I mean that, that podcast that I share with the 358 episodes, that's because they've been doing it consistently. You know what I mean? To be able to go from 13K to 130,000K a month as far as our downloads and streams. And they actually started on YouTube later and their YouTube has, still hasn't cannibalized their audio. But YouTube is such a big medium and platform in Africa and especially in the Kenyan market, you know what I mean? So you see these behaviors in their episodes, you know what I mean? They're, they're long episodes, but they also release a mini, a mini sold on Mondays. So they have different lengths of their shows, but I can get you more data on that, no problem. Yeah. <clears throat> it seems that from what I've taken in this presentation, like authenticity, being a student and even cons and also taking the fact of the greater good mm -hmm. are like the thorough lines when it comes to to African podcasting. Mm -hmm. But for like myself and maybe some others in there, when it comes to establishing these relationships, is there anything else culturally we should be made aware of? Mm, that's a good question. Is there anything culturally you should be made aware of? I think if you go in there with authenticity, I think it's also important to Again, make sure that whatever you're asking for or however you want to contribute, that it's mutually beneficial. I think that's the other thing, right? Like a lot of times people, their ask may be one-sided. And so I think it's really important to make sure that your ask is, or that your, um, that your value, you know what I mean, is mutually beneficial. I think that's like the biggest thing, two of the biggest things. But, you know, be yourself. Like people are really, really receptive. Um, and, you know, that cross-promotion, man, I'm telling you, like people are eager, you know what I mean, to jump into some of the markets that they don't have access to or that they may not be as big in. And I think that's vice versa, right? Like coming from the West into, you know what I mean, let's say into Africa and also from Africa into the West. So there's, there's opportunity in, in for collaboration um, across the board in so many different ways. Hi. Um, Hi. <laughs> uh, this is an awesome presentation. Um, my Thank question you. was about um, the genre breakdown that you put up there, which was interesting. And it said basically that the top one was the culture, media, and arts. Um, I was curious, first of all, like what, what kind of shows that means? Like if you could get a little more specific about what we're talking about when we say that. And then also, are there any genres you're noticing that like people really w are wanting more of or that are growing more rapidly than others, I think that. So I think like the rest of the world, true crime is growing. Um, and we've seen like some really good shows. There's a, a media house called Nation Media, who's one of our partners, and they've done um, some really good shows. One's called Case Number Zero, another one, um, Paradise Lost. So Case Number Zero was about a journalist who ended up, um, it's about a journalist who uh, ended up disappearing mysteriously. And the fact that it was never, he's never been found. And so that was great, but it was like a, um, it's, it's dramatic, you know what I mean? Like it, it, it's a really, really good, well-produced podcast. Um, and then you have another one, Paradise Lost, which talks about um, someone who essentially lost, you know what I mean, a lot, uh, lost their paradise. And 
you know, et cetera, et cetera. But these are really, really great produced pods. So we're, we're seeing, you know, true crime and, and drama. But when we talk about like culture and media, like culture could be, you know, the actual culture. Like one of my colleagues, you know, um, listens to a podcast in their native language because they're trying to realign with their native language because their parents primarily taught them to speak in English and only key Swahili versus their tribal language, right? So cultural in that aspect is a really big part of um, of that culture. And then, you know, media, you know, culture, media, and arts is kind of like that lifestyle thing as well. So a lot of times people are, there are things that reign true in the West that are actually happening there too in terms of like lifestyle. Like, hey, John. Um, so like the Real Housewives of Nairobi it just like launched this t television show, which is like, you know what I mean? Something like the Real Housewives of name a city in America, right? Um, <laughs> and so, you know, like you see some trends and things like that um, around, you know, what's happening and the behaviors and the listeners. Ship, does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay, okay, cool. Uh, did anyone have, else have any questions? Perfect. Oh, Lindsay, did you raise your hand? I did not. Oh. Great. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>